Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the exec event here at Randy Seidel's house in Massachusetts, Sales Acceleration uh, Cube After Dark. I'm here with Ed Walsh, who's the CEO of Chaos Search. Ed, good friend of the Cube. Good to see him, my friend. Thanks, Thanks for coming on. So we just wrote this piece, George Gilbert and I, this weekend. We, we dropped it. It's called Getting Ready for the Sixth Data Platform. Yeah. So we basically said, okay, there's five really prominent data platforms. In deference to Oracle, we didn't kind of sort of included Oracle, sure. IBM, you know, there are others, but yeah. you know, the big five are the big three clouds, Snowflake and, and Databricks. Yeah. And we we're saying, look, they're really not set up with this new Uber for all, real time environment, digital twin of your business. Um, and we had Ryan Blue on, who's the the, uh, the, the creator of Iceberg, yeah. basically say, look, these, these platforms could morph. They're becoming, you know, more accepting of open table formats which by the way could disrupt them. So I want to ask you, because you're in the field, sure. you see all this stuff. What's missing when you talk to customers in today's data platforms? Uh, good question. So I, we might not know all the answers, but I just what customers are telling us is, um, or at least, and I can give you a couple examples, is they're looking for, there's platforms for long-term retention. What they're looking for is how do they get closer to real time? How do they get that um, telemetry, event logs, but the machine generated data is coming at them so fast and furious that typically all those platforms you just mentioned all have pipelines associated with them. You know, it's the old data prep issue, right? IDC is usually 80% of the problem, now it's 90%, well, because the tools are easier, but the data prep, the data pipelines, the exact same thing since, you know, the tools are getting better, don't get me wrong. Um, but the net net is they're looking for, okay, that's fine for what I'm trying to do, but how do I marry? And they're looking to marry. So we're like a complement to these platforms. What we do well is the streaming data, the telemetry data coming in and making it instantly available to you. So. The concept of, uh, you know, we made S3 or GCS uh, hot database, literally stream into any of your access points for GCS or Amazon worldwide. It's literally in our fabric. It's in your dashboard in a minute, queries in seconds. That's something you can't get from these other platforms, mostly on the streaming data aspect. So um, that's where we're seeing most of the pull, the demand, is looking at how do you bring these. And then I guess the other thing is, and you saw this with the Splunk acquisition, the idea of bringing the observability and security data lakes together, both streaming data, both coming at you, you know, the four Vs of data. Uh, and that's typically, they're not able to do that in the other platforms. Yeah, so I want to ask you, so, so you're saying for the streaming data in particular, yeah. you can leave the data in place on, on S3 and that's, that's going to be less expensive to do all that activity. Sure. Maybe not the full data pipeline, sure. but, but, but like, you're hearing from customers that, well, it's getting expensive to do all this inside of Snowflake. Yep. We want to maybe do some of the batch work outside of Snowflake, and you're seeing the streaming work now as, as well for certain workloads. Sure. And then the other thing is that the, we'll talk Gen AI, because you have to toss us into it. People are looking to leverage that. What they used to do, like the you know, data bricks on the ML ops, the AI ops, um, we do see, and I was curious what you're seeing, the LLM technology. People are saying, well, why do I have 18 different data lakes? Why do I have all these different ML, AI? And I can look at what you can do with these LLMs. Now, they're going to bring private LLMs. They're going to go public to private. But that's causing people to look at architectures differently because, okay, all those platforms, now are you going to go across different, six different platforms and have six different yeah. Gen AI platforms? Uh, it becomes hard. Right? I mean, we're so, definitely seeing a trend toward sort of unifying all the different storage yeah. types and, and, yeah. and data types. Um, but the, you're right, the power of these LLMs is amazing, but it's really it's, confusing to people, right? There's like all these choices. I know in our particular case, Ed, we built the, the Cube AI recently, yeah. and we built it, you know, kind of, in a, we got to an MVP in a month yeah. for, you know, tens of thousands of dollars or it's, less. It's amazing. I mean, it's what you quite amazing. Do. And I was at UiPath last week, okay. and, and it's kind of, it's a, it's a two edged sword for those guys, right? On the one hand, a lot of the low end work, like making clips and, pushing them out Goes to social away. media, a lot of stuff we do. We did that with our own, we didn't need RPA to do that. Yeah. You know, we don't need end-to-end -end automation. At the same time, if you really do need end-to-end -end automation, you're going to need a horizontal platform. So it's, 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 it's both, but I think it's hard to predict right now. It's very disruptive and there's it's so many fast. choices out there. So we're just following clients. So the first, we did the first move, which is using public LLM, so open AI type of things. Yeah. Now, we do telemetry, so security observability. You can't share that with a model, it, 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 no matter what you do. No, you can't let the LLM vendor have access to that data, no just, way. So even before, we'll show you how to use a public model and then we see people using, and they're using different terminologies. It's private LLMs or SLM, subject matter LLMs. I don't know if that's the right 
uh, terms, but that's what people are using with us. Yeah, we've called it domain specific. Okay, oh, okay. So, but they're looking for their own, but they're yeah. gonna take these models, which kind of, you know, think of what happened with Meta, right? It somehow leaked out there. Now you have this model that they spent gazillion dollars building. Now you can leverage and, you know, optimize for your own environment. So we see, actually, you're gonna optimize the application and then the model, but there has to be an innovation at the data layer model. So what we're able to do is bring in all that data. Our superpower is getting all that data streaming in easily without big teams doing pipelines, whatnot, have it streaming and now have your model go after it. And we can do public models. And by the way, it's amazing. Without the public model seeing anything but schema, it's amazing what you can do for these different use cases. What LLMs are strong at is helping the humans. So natural language, and it knows a lot of these um, security type of uh, you know, exposures, they're not all things that happened in the last, you know, 18 months. Think of all that history, you're able to do it really quickly. And then we quickly see clients using their own LMs, but our ability to actually take what you do in the application, the model, and instead of just using what everyone's doing is they're not, the, they're integrating the data model, they're not innovating. What we're doing is we have this order of magnitude better data model for cost effectiveness. Now we're orchestrating what you can do in LMs, public or private with your application. What? And that like unleashes things. Where does the innovation need to be in your view in that data layer? Um, so it's a couple fold, right? So if you think of data, uh, once you do the LMs, also you have AI, you want more data, right? So right now with the data models, because of complexity of bringing data in the cost, no one keeps even their simplest things like logs. Look at the, the hack at you know, Microsoft with yeah. the whole State Department. If you didn't have the logs, you couldn't go after it. So very basically, you should have all your logs, but people don't. And then they do a pipeline of dog, uh, logs and they throw out data and that's a wrong way to do it. So because it's too expensive? It's or? too expensive yeah. to put it in. So what we have is an order of magnitude benefit. And I can give you a couple examples of what people did, but every one of our customers goes from, I'm at four terabytes a day, I'm keeping now 38, Black Friday 400, 300, and I'm still saving 50 to 80%. So what we didn't do is we didn't um, integrate the back end. We innovated the back end. It is a purpose-built six patents database. We make S3 or GCS a database. And because of that, we pick up the attributes. So there needs to be fundamental. It's not just putting a format on S3 or GCS. Yes, it's cheaper, right? Everyone knows that, but over some, you just can't keep it all. But with us, you can. So one is you need to be able to cost effectively keep it all. Second thing is a pipeline, the key ingest. If your database is S3 GCS, land it, and we understand that schema, you set it and forget it. That's not the case for any of these other platforms. That's a lot of uh, time and complexity for all these members. So. so it wasn't a big surprise. You mentioned earlier the Splunk acquisition by Cisco, $28 billion acquisition. That's cool. um, like I said, it wasn't a big, a well-kept secret. We, we knew it was coming. We knew yeah. you know, a year earlier, Cisco tried to buy Splunk for I think 20 billion. They ended up paying 28 billion. Maybe Gary Steele get a, get a little cleanup worth $8 billion. Nice job. <laughs> yeah. But what do you make of that? Uh, consolidation in the observability space. Um, I love it. You, you, why? Why do you love it? Why are you happy? I mean, Jeremy Burton was saying the same thing. Okay, so if you look at where Cisco, it's you just picked up high quality SaaS revenue. So very few acquisitions you can pick up that type of size of, again, high quality, high margin revenue. So it, to me, it made all sense for the financials. Cisco's trying to do that as a business, get more of the software side, repeatable. And they really want to do this full stack observability, which uh, there's a lot between the lip and the cup to do that, right? So, and the one thing is you look at Splunk, it does a lot of that. So they're bringing enterprise clients. So to me, for technology, revenue quality, uh, the customer base makes all the sense in the world. Now, I think underneath it, same thing about, do you innovate on the data layer? Well, less, right? So there's no, you know, I'm not giving anything proprietary about Splunk, but yeah, they need to do some innovation on the data layer. Imagine if you could uh, have, you know, again, uh, if you look at the architecture we're doing, we're saving 50, 80% in the back ends. Imagine what that would do for Splunk's margins. Now, Splunk's margins are unbelievable if you looked at them, right? So, oh yeah, that's why so, it's going to be accretive to Cisco. So I love it, and also it, it brings awareness. It's like, hey, listen, you need all this streaming debt in. They do that well. Notice you didn't say the number of six platforms were one of them. Now they do the streaming well, just like we do. We just do an order of magnitude more cost effective. Yeah, as I mentioned Jeremy Burton, he sort of did this post. It was like old guard, new guard. Yeah. You know, Jeremy's very clever in that regard. But um, all right, Ed, thanks so much for taking some time with us on, yeah, on the cube. Right. I'll let you go back to the party and uh, <laughs> appreciate your time. As always, thank you. All right, you're very welcome. All right, keep it right there for more action from the Sales Accelerator Exec event in Massachusetts. We'll be right back.